Hi. Uh, short talk, but I want to talk about something very different. No presentation. I just want to share with you some experience from China and to see how it's relevant for us. Let's talk about credit scoring. Let's assume that you want now to give credit to someone in a peer-to-peer -peer lending, or you are a new lender and you want to make sure whether someone is credit worthy. The normal format that we would use is something that is known as credit scoring all around the world. We actually go and try to take financial records of the potential lender and try to understand from the financial records whether they are relevant as a loan taker. We try to understand how risky they are as someone who will take the money. So normally what we try to do, we try to understand how they behaved with uh, loans they took before, previous loans. How do, do, they, do they handle their finance? And that's a good credit scoring system that is used all around the world. What's the problem with these systems? If someone do not have, does not have the financial records you need, you are not actually able to come with some credit scoring for them. So let's go to China for a second. The Chinese had this problem recently. What happened in China? In China, they have the biggest migration ever from people migrating from the villages to the big cities. 400 million people. Let's repeat this number. 400 million people are going to relocate from the village to the city in China. And China realized that one of the biggest challenges they have is how actually they'll be able to provide some credit to the people who migrate to the city. Let's assume that's a new person coming to the city. Who would actually give them the first money they need to go for some training or some educational system? Who would give them the first apartment they rent or the first job so they can actually enter the market? The problem is that you cannot trust these people. They came from the village and you have no records about them. So the Chinese government wanted to develop something like the FICO, something like credit scoring we have in every Western country. The problem was that there were no records at all about these people. Most of these people that migrate from the village to the city do not have a bank account, don't have any history about payment or about loans or anything that could be indicative about credit scoring. So how could I actually trust them? The Chinese government decided to go on a different project something very different than what we have in the West. But let me take you for a second. Did any one of you saw this uh, episode in uh, Black Mirror? I don't know if you saw, it's called Nose Dive. There's an episode in Black Mirror when there are people, all people have their scoring. Kind of like people go around the world and they have their score as a person. Everything you do in life, you are nice to a person, a salesperson, your scoring goes up. You are rude to a salesperson or you're rude in a party, your scoring goes down. Everything you do impacts your scoring. In this episode, which is a TV show, my, uh, Black Mirror, it's kind of like showing us how gamification or the like era that we live with Facebook might impact our life. Because people who have high scoring will be invited to the best parties, will have great fun. And those people who have low scoring might even lose their jobs. But you know, Charlie Brooks, who is the director of Black Mirror, when he was asked about this TV show, he said, hey, I'm not about TV shows. I'm trying to show you snapshot of reality. I'm trying to show you what happens 10 minutes from now if we just stop paying attention. So let's go to China. What they did. The Chinese government decided to go in a different method than any other way in the world. They addressed the technology company, the leading technology company, Huawei, Tencent, uh, Chiwi, all the leading technology companies and say, hey, are you able actually to come with credit scoring which is not based on any financial records? And they say, hey, actually we have a lot of data. We have data about what people purchase, who are their friends, what they communicate about, what they play. Because in China, mobile is in much kind of like deeper penetration that we have in e-commerce in much deeper penetration than we have in the Western world. 
So actually, they took all this data that was available and tried to come up with something which they call social scoring. It's not credit scoring, but how would you rank someone socially? And that's actually what the Chinese say. Do you buy diapers online? You're probably a good family man. Do you have a lot of friends that you play online games with for 10 hours straight? Did you just share a post which is aggressive about your coworker? You can see your scoring takes a nosedive. The Chinese government was the first one to actually go to the technology company and say, hey, can you actually develop a full system which would give social scoring just based on social behavior? And they came with something we call the Sesame Ranking. Check it. It's called Sesame Ranking. It's a system developed by the technology companies in China. And this score actually gives score for a person from 300 to 900. Every person has a score. And it's not only that your score supposed to predict kind of like how social trustworthy you are, it also should affect your life. So what happens now in China, and it's all voluntarily, is that dating sites, for example, said, hey, you can join our service if you have scoring above 750. So it's a benefit. The train company said you, are willing, you can buy a ticket in the first class if you have a score above 700. But at the same time, some people who scored low are actually deprived of opportunities. So now in China, if you score below 400, you probably would not be able to get any credit or probably you would not be able to apply for a governmental job. But now it's only voluntarily in China. But the Chinese government said, hey, actually, this project works so well that we'll go to do it as a mandatory project. So this mandatory project aimed that by the year of 2020, every citizen in China will have a score from 300 to 750. And they'll take all the records that are available from technology companies and elsewhere, try to score your ranking. What's interesting is that the Chinese government already announced that people who would score high will be able to apply for governmental jobs, and get actually extended line of credit, people who score low would not even be able to get a travel permit to go outside of their zone or their district. And it's a governmental plan, it's all published. When we speak about it, we say, hey, that's the Chinese, it's troublesome. And not only that the Chinese are saying that they will score people, but your score will be affected about who your friends or co-workers are. So when you pick to sit next to a person, think what's their score, because it's gonna affect your score. If your family or friends score low, it will affect your scoring. That's how the government uh, in China say. We think it's a Chinese program, program and it's probably only applied to China. Think again. Most of the actually internet companies think it's a better solution to score how trustworthy people are than former systems we had about financial scoring or history transaction scoring. They actually think that we can learn from people's social behavior the way that they purchase product online, how they play, what language they use, we can actually create a much more accurate trustworthiness scoring. And companies like Uber already apply this score when they decide whether to take a new driver. Companies like Airbnb now would decide whether you are trustworthy as a lender. It's a system that for the first time say, hey, we don't care about your financial records, Let's go for your social data or social interactions and learn how trustworthy of a person you are. So next time you will get or not get credit, it will not be based on the question, what were your financial transactions or financial history? It will be how nice you are to other people, what language you use, where do you gather, which conferences you go to, who are your friends and mates. That will be actually the ultimate social scoring. But here, by the way, mobility between scoring is much harder. So it's a snapshot to how China would actually affect the way we score ourselves. Thank you.